deep into the ground Then I'll know that I am no bound joy it is, what a joy it was, what a thrill it was for me to watch this beautiful bride walk down that aisle by the side of her beloved father to, uh, to join us here at this place. As a father, I can tell you that that is one of the most significant walks of a lifetime, and it's uh, also one of the longest walks of a lifetime. Uh, it's, a, it's a walk filled with memories and nostalgia, with uh, endings and beginnings, with dreams and fears, and uh, unique lifetime insights that are compressed into one short minute of uh, a walk with your, special, with your special daughter. And ultimately the realization that uh, all of those hopes and dreams and prayers and uh, work walking beside you uh, your father in this case, but I think it symbolizes both of your parents. Loving you and guiding you and encouraging you on God's path for your chosen direction. Your beautiful white dress, symbolic of purity and virtue and uh, purity before God. These are all symbols that to me 
are significant that now you stand here at this place and, uh, and participate in this beautiful ordinance. It's significant that Joel is standing here by your side. Um, Joel didn't just appear from nowhere. Uh, <laughs> Joel is also a man who put his feet on God's path and who has been careful to allow God to guide his footsteps and lead him to here, to where you both stand at this point. Your paths have not always been easy, not always been clear. There have been t twists and turns, there have been roadblocks, there have been times of confusion and disappointment. I remember long conversations with Joel, inspired blessings and heartfelt prayers and discussions as we talked about his path, his dating experiences, and his life's experiences and um, how God was in his life and guiding his footsteps. So here you are. From here, from where you stand now, I hope that you can invite you to recognize all of those experiences as preparatory, as schooling and strengthening experiences that, I would, that God used to prepare you to give you the wisdom for the time when your t t paths would cross and your lives would intertwine and that would bring you to this point. You stand here at the end of this path at kind of a spiritual oasis as it is, as it were, this beautiful spot where your paths now intertwine and, and merge and you now stand on a path together. And from here your path will take you to wondrous places. I would like you to notice that you're standing side by side, okay? Now, if Joel had been assigned to drive the truck, or he had been assigned to get you from there to here, my guess is that it would have been on a motor scooter with uh, round goggles at a faster speed, uh, you know, something like that, with him in front and you on the back with your dress flying in. That's not the way it's supposed to be from here on out, though. Um, God said in Corinthians, Paul, Paul instructs us, Neither is the man without the woman, neither wo the woman without the man in the Lord. For as the woman is of the man, even so is the man also by the woman. So from this point, you are companions. You are partners. Partners in life. Equal partners. Not junior partners. Not limited partners. Not silent partners. But equal partners. As you stand symbolically here side by side to begin your new lives together. As you travel life's road together, it's important that uh, you recognize that successful travelers keep sight of not only eternal destination points, but also they simultaneously and skillfully negotiate the bumps, the rocks, the twists and turns in the road immediately ahead without getting bogged down or lost. So I would encourage you to continue to take time to take your bearings through prayer and meditation and scripture and those practices that you know will bring that kind of eternal vision into your life, while at the same time being mindful of the day-to-day -day challenges and the labors that you will share with your partner as you go through life. Joel, I would encourage you to especially be attentive to your wife, to see first to her needs, her wants and her challenges before yours, before children's, before parents, before friends, before anyone. She is your queen. And as is fitting of a queen, I think a prop, an appropriate response would be, as you wish. <laughs> this will be especially important as you go forward from here, from this beautiful occasion and get back into life with its challenges, its twists and turns, and busy schedules, and school, and careers, and uh, family in the future, financial challenges, all these will come at you. And uh, I, I would encourage you to keep that perspective of eternal and current. I think this is what the Savior meant when he said, for this cause shall a man leave his father and his mother and cleave unto his wife, and they twain shall be one flesh, so then they are no more twain, but one flesh. Wherefore, what therefore God hath joined together, let no man put asunder. 
being attentive to each other in, is keeping intact that wonderful triangle that you are beginning today. The two of you with God. As each leg of that triangle is strong and is attended to, your union will be beautiful and will be blessed. I believe that's what, what Paul was talking about, where if we put asunder what God has brought together, we're not being attentive and being careful with either our relationship with God or our relationship with each other. And I would encourage you to keep that triangle strong and beautiful and uh, well attended to. Finally, uh, as pertaining to things that are a challenge sometimes from day to day, uh, President Joseph F. Smith said, after all, to do well those things which God ordained to be the common lot of all mankind is the truest greatness. We should never be discouraged in those daily tasks which God has ordained to be the common lot of man. One final thought. As you begin this path together, may you also discover that it is important for you, each individually, to still have your individual paths that you walk. As you um, take those paths into the world of accomplishment that God has in mind for each of you. A wise philosopher once described it as, uh, as a garden. So you're on a path together where you come together and you share, uh, you share your lives and then you go into your own individual gardens and you work those gardens in the way that is personal to each of you and you reap the fruit and then you bring that fruit and you share it together back on the path in a way that it will move you down the path together in a beautiful and uh, lovely way. So I, I commend that to you for your consideration. Let me speak just for a moment as, uh, as a father and not as an officiant, if I may. Makes it hard to be an officiant in this kind of an experience. <laughs> Let me, um, let me express my gratitude first for uh, a mother and a father who carefully schooled and taught and prepared a lovely, pure, and God-fearing woman to be a companion for my son. <clears throat> in a home centered on Christ, and indeed, um, started as a result of uh, mission-centered work for Christ, um, uh, this uh, beautiful woman stands in front of us, uh, centered on Christ and well prepared. Grateful for a son who, in the face of challenges and disappointments in his life, um, kept faithfully moving forward, true to his priesthood covenants and obligations, and patient and wise in his challenges. Thank you for the blessings that you've all been in our lives. Now in a few minutes, you will stand here and speak words that will change eternity, will change your eternities. Your eternities will change first because of this love, because of the love that brings you together and binds you together. Love that if nourished will, will become deeper and more significant than you can possibly imagine at this point. Second, your eternities will change because you are beginning a new family. This is a new family unit. The family is the eternal unit of God's plan for happiness for his children. You will initiate your own family unit and begin that special walk of learning celestial parenting with God as your guide and love as your way. Most importantly, your eternity will change because the words you will speak are words of covenant between you and God. God will honor your vows as you honor your vows to him and to one another. These vows today are preparatory to those eternal vows that you will make and see the that you will receive Now I'm closing God bless you. May he bless your lives. May he take you to places of blessing and joy as you walk this life together. And I leave that with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.
Now will you please take each other by the right hand. Joel Mark Dayton and Crystal Joy Nix, you have taken one another by the right hand in token of the covenants you will now enter into in the presence of God and these witnesses. Joel Mark Dayton, do you take Crystal Joy Nix as your lawfully wedded wife? And do you, in, of your own free will and choice, covenant as her companion and lawfully wedded husband, that you will cleave unto her and none else? that you will observe all the laws, covenants, and obligations pertaining to the holy state of matrimony, and that you will love, honor, and cherish her as long as you both shall live. Yeah. Crystal join X. Do you take Joel Mark Dayton as your lawfully wedded husband? And do you, of your own free will and choice, Okay. <laughs> Crystal Joy Nix, do you take Joel Mark Dayton as your lawfully wedded husband? And do you, of your own free will and choice, covenant as his companion and lawfully wedded wife, that you will cleave unto him and none else? That you will observe all the laws, covenants, and obligations pertaining to the holy state of matrimony? and that you will love, honor, and cherish him as long as you both shall live? I do. By virtue of the legal authority vested in me as an elder of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, I pronounce you, Joel Mark Dayton, and Crystal Joy Nix, husband and wife, legally and lawfully wedded for the period of your mortal lives. May God bless your union with joy in your posterity and a long life of happiness together. And may he enable you to keep sacred the covenants you have made. These blessings I invoke upon you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. You may now kiss one another as husband and wife. Here's our married couple. <laughs>